Hello everybody and welcome to 60 Second Figure Reviews where today we're taking a look at the Walmart exclusive G.I. Joe Classified Series Retro Carded Commando Snake Eyes, which is of course the second Commando Snake Eyes made by Hasbro for the G.I. Joe Classified line. And I'm hoping that it's better than the first one. No spoilers. But yeah, let's uh, just, I guess, jump right into the review. So here, of course, is the figure. He's looking pretty good, I have to say. Let's go take a closer peek, if you will. So here you can see, uh, hold up, Ooh, whoa, I just hit my light, whoa, hey. I'm gonna change the focus real quick so you can get a nice view of the head sculpt. Pretty nice head sculpt, considering this is the major, most major change from the previous version. I wanna get a good look at it. And here, of course, you have, uh, what is that? Here, of course, you have the torso which is reuse from the Sergeant Stalker figure, as well as this uh, torso overlay piece is also reuse from the Sergeant Stalker figure. There's the legs, again, reuse from the Sergeant Stalker figure, but the Sergeant Stalker figure was pretty good, so for whatever that's worth, uh, I think it was pretty good. All right, well, now that we've gotten a closer look at the figure, we can, of course, go over articulation just like any competent reviewer would. <laughs> All right, let's start with the head. The head can look up. Let's get this guy into a neutral-ish stance so you guys can kind of get a feel for how he moves. So the head can go up to here, down to here, swivel all the way around. It's got a ball peg here at the top of the neck and one at the bottom of the neck, but it's a bit... The bottom, one at the bottom is a bit limited. You're not really going to get much out of that except for some swivel. Ugh, this is not a fun position to be recording in, trust me. All right, then to the torso, we have a waist swivel as well as a ball joint, so you can pose that however you want. Standard with the classified line, of course. Then you have a cut in the torso here, which allows you to go forward about... that far and back that far. So the backward arc is a lot better than the forward arc, which kind of is unfortunate because if you play with action figures a lot, you would know that the forward arc is more important for posing. So that's a little unfortunate, but it's fine. Here we of course have the arm, which can go, oh, oh my, that is the first time that's ever happened to me. The classified figure. Ah, there we go. Right, so. The arm can come up that far, a little over 90 degrees, getting you close to a Y stance. We've got a bicep swivel. I uh, don't, not a fan of these new bicep swivels uh, that they have going on some of their new figures. It's not just the classified series either. I've seen it on Marvel Legends. I don't really collect Star Wars that much, so as much as I love it, which is a lot, but not a fan of this. I wish they would kind of go back to the older style, but they seem to be pivoting to uh, this, which not my favorite, I'm going to be honest, but that's fine. Anyway, I'll save the rest for the complaints. Uh, we've got a double jointed uh, elbow, which will get us a good range of motion. If you push it, it would get even more than this, but that's pretty solid. And of course, we have our Hasbro standard hands. This is left hand has the up and down pivot, so he is left-handed. You get the swivel, as you would expect. His right hand does have the in and out joint for some knife poses, or if there's any specific poses you want, you're gonna have to use his left hand for that. Here we have the standard G.I. Joe classified drop-down hip. It brings you down, then you can kick up and get a crazy range there. Nice. Goes out to 90 degrees. Pretty solid, a little short of 90, but that's fine. Then you've got a swivel there at the thigh, a double jointed knee, which will get you a very decent range. In fact, I would argue pretty much perfect. You definitely wouldn't need any more than that. Then you've got the boot swivel right here, which will let you swivel the entire shin area of the boot. You've got an up down, rocker here for your foot, and you've got the standard Hasbro front-facing pin on the foot. So that's articulation. 
I'm going to get him posed back up and we can take a look at his accessories. Just give me one second. All right, there. Now we have Snake Eyes all nice and posed in a nice neutral stance. I'll set him back there for now. And I'll set the autofocus back on my camera. Oh, whoops. There. All right, let's take a look at his accessories. I have his little tray here with all of his parts and pieces. You get this pamphlet of legal information. Where's my... Toss that to the side. First, you get his man purse. Let me focus up over here. You get his man purse. This can, of course, be put on his person. Like that. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the man purse look. If you like the man purse look, you can use it all you want. I'm going to set that aside for my copy. Next, he comes with his signature Uzi, of course, molded in all black, no paint at all on this bad boy. It's got the uh, muzzle here and the magazine and the stock, classic for Snake Eyes. And that can be mounted into his hand, just like any other gun from a Hasbro series like that. Let me get him nice and posed for when we do some comparison shots in a second. There we go. Looks pretty good. Next, we have his pistol. I don't know what kind of pistol this is. I'm definitely, definitely not a gun person. So we have a nice pistol here. Uh, pretty good mold. It's got a little bit of green paint, just a little bit of an accent. Pretty nice. And to go with that pistol, we have this here silencer, which is kind of a rectangular kind of shape with a nice hole in the front. So you can still put in your muzzle effects that you might have gotten with your three pack vipers or any other figures that might come with that. That, of course, there's a nice hole in the front of this gun. Can just slide right in and giving you this pistol, silenced pistol look that you can put in his hand the same way as the Uzi over there. But for the purpose of this video, we are going to be putting it directly into the holster on his side here. Just slides right in. This piece here slides into the front section of the holster. Push, whoa, don't want to break it. I almost broke it. Push that down like that. That completes his right holster. back over here. Next we have his two, he comes with two of these small little grenade gas canister flashbang, I don't know what it is, pieces. He can hold them in his hands like so. I will not be displaying mine like this personally, but for those of you who want him to be holding a grenade, he can hold it just fine, as you can see here. Pretty nice. I'm going to take that out. I'm going to leave his arm extended like that because I am about to put another accessory in his hand. This time it's going to stay that way. So again, he comes with two of these gas canister pieces. Next is his knife. Nice little combat knife. It's got some green detailing on the handle. Pretty nice color there. Mine came a bit warped in the packaging. I think some warm water or heat gun won't fix. The blade is, of course, black plastic, I do believe. And that will either fit here in his sheath facing this way or how I'm going to put it in his hand. This will face either way, but I think it looks cooler when you put it in a reverse grip. And now I know it's not accurate to how you would actually hold a knife or whatever, but I just think it looks cool, man. Nice. You see, and that's one of my issues with the figure. All right. All right. And our last accessory here is the G.I. Joe stand that comes with all the retro releases. It's got two pegs here and two corresponding holes in the feet. Next, we're going to do the size comparisons. I've got a variety of figures here from all kinds of different lines from Hasbro. And uh, we're just going to go take a look right now. Starting with the body mold mate, or the donor, if you will, Sergeant Stalker. That's how he stands next to him. We've also got a bigger Joe here in the original release Gung Ho. 
that's going to go right next to him on this side. So that should give you an idea of how he scales with your other Joes. He's going to be a bit shorter than your standard size and a bit, and a, <laughs> quite a bit shorter than your uh, bigger sized figures. So those are the G.I. Joe comparisons. Oh, <laughs> I'll pick them up real quick. Next, we've got a Hasbro Marvel Legends series Black Panther, which is on the Vulcan body. So you can see he's going to be shorter also than your Marvel Legends standard body. Next, oh, hold on, I have to reach for this. Next, we've got a Hasbro Black Series 501st Legion clone trooper, who is just a hair shorter than your Snake Eyes. So. If you wanted to do any kind of shenanigans with customs or whatever, that's kind of the scale you're looking at for these releases. Let me take those away. Lastly, here we have my channel mascot, of course, the SH Figure Arts Bodycon. This Bodycon is scaled with all SH Figure Arts, so he's about the same size as the rest of them. So that kind of gives you an idea of how tall he's going to be compared to some SH Figure Arts. If you wanted to do anything like that, he's going to tower over them because SH Figure Arts are very small. All right, and I got one last comparison, not really a size comparison, but I'm going to go real quick to grab my O2 Snake Eyes, the O2 Ninja Snake Eyes, next to your Commando Snake Eyes, Whoa. if you wanted to get an idea of how that looks. Of course, he's all posed up, so it doesn't give you a really accurate representation of his size. But yeah, that's how he looks. All right, we'll take them out. There we go. All right, in this next part, I'm going to be going over a comparison between the original G.I. Joe Classified Commando Snake Eyes and the new G.I. Joe Classified Commando Snake Eyes. So let's bring them in here a bit. Hope these focus up because I have no way of refocusing it if it doesn't. So there's the head sculpt difference. Now, this one on the right here is a bit more detailed than the one here on the left, but that kind of lends it to looking less accurate to the original image, which I'll put up right here. And you can kind of compare the two heads to the original image. This one kind of gives me more of a G.I. Joe Resolute vibe, which will be put right here on the screen. Uh, they both look good, don't get me wrong. So if you can only get this one, that's gonna be great. It's gonna look fine. But uh, once you get down to the chest is where you start to see the biggest differences. Uh, this one is using the beachhead body, which I have my problems with, mainly that the arms come out lower to the side than they should. Kind of makes him look like he, uh, I don't know, like his arms are coming out of his torso or something. I don't know. It doesn't look right. Uh, he's got the, now this is personal preference, but I prefer the non-stripey arms of this figure than this one. Uh, his pistol here has a round silencer instead of the more squared off one that this figure comes with. His knife is also more uh, like combat shaped compared to the knife on this figure, I guess. More has more taper to it. But yeah, here you can see the feet. This is, I think these are new feet. I'm not sure. These are the legs. Here, I'll give you a nice clean shot of both of them standing next to each other so you can make your decisions on which ones you think looks better. It's not really fair to compare them like this though, so I'm gonna get him in a cooler pose. Yeah, there you go. So there, now you have a bit more of a aggressive Snake Eyes pose over the one I had before. Now you kinda have the comparison of the two. There you go, that's the two figures standing next to each other. Uh, now, we're gonna get into the final thoughts, so I don't wanna spoil that, but that's the comparison. You can decide which one you like better, and let me know in the comments. I'm actually kinda interested to see what people think here. All right, let's go into the kind of nitty gritty of this figure. So, starting off with build quality, it's up to standard for Hasbro, so if you collect any Hasbro lines, you'll kind of know what to expect here. Apart from these biceps, which I am not a fan of, uh, 
at first I didn't really care. Like I have my Crimson Guards, of course, and my Stalker, who all have the same kind of bicep. And at first I didn't care. It kind of doesn't look as good, and it can come off, which I've never had happen with a classified figure by accident before. And another gripe I have with my personal copy, now this varies from figure to figure because, of course, the uh, Sergeant Stalker shares a body with him, and I don't have this issue on my Sergeant Stalker, but the legs are pretty, pretty loosey-goosey here. Not a fan of that. It's going to make posing a bit more annoying. But it's not bad enough where it won't stand. Of course, he stands just fine and looks pretty damn good while he's standing, if you do ask me. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> that's uh recording for you <laughs> but no he, looked, he does look pretty good now onto the positives i think the the sculpt work here is great just like it was great on stalker but uh let me bring this figure closer again so you can get a look at that nice head sculpt i think that head sculpt is a massive massive improvement over the zero or not zero it was um the two pack that came with the snake eyes and the timber the gray timber uh, that was kind of a more, like, heavy-duty armor kind of look, and I didn't vibe with it as much. So I think this one definitely hits that kind of classic, original-run Snake Eyes feeling a lot more than the newer, or than the older release. So if you're looking for a classic Snake Eyes, I would obviously recommend picking this one up. Now, should you buy this figure? Yeah, I would say you should buy this figure. Uh... If you're like me and you prefer the Ninja Snake Eyes and you have a Ninja Snake Eyes as your main Snake Eyes in your display, then and you don't really have a place for this one, I guess it makes sense. You don't have to get it. But if you want to have a Commando Snake Eyes, this is the one to go with easily. If you can even find it, I got lucky and had one stocked at a Walmart. But you know how Walmart can be with their exclusive, so I don't blame you at all if you go for the original release. But if you can get this one for a reasonable price, I would highly, 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 highly Highly recommend getting the this release and not the original. So yeah, overall, I would give this figure a 7.5 out of 10. I'm trying to be a bit harsher with my criticism, but I think... No, we're going to go an 8. An 8 out of 10 for this figure is pretty good. Uh, I would definitely recommend picking them up if you get the chance. And uh, yeah, I guess that's going to be it for this video, guys. If you do enjoy this video, please be sure to comment down below and tell me any other figures you might want to see me do a review of. Also, be sure to check in on March 8th, around then, or maybe March 9th. I'm going to be covering the G.I. Joe event that happens from Hasbro, giving my live reactions and giving my thoughts on each release after the thing, after the stream ends. Uh, but that's kind of it for this video. Check out the other shorts if you want to see my usual kind of content, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.